Good morning, coaches. Um, let's get started. Welcome back to another Coffee with Coaches. My name is Cara Miller, and I am your campus dietitian. Um, today, we are going to be talking about meal and snack timing, but if anyone missed previous sessions, I highly recommend going back. Um, I did put a note in the chat. Um, I'll post it again towards the end in case we have anyone join a little bit later, um, but it does have the link to the um, slides for today, as well as a link to the YouTube channel where you can see the previous sessions. So, previous sessions um, included hydration and performance plates. So those kind of set us up today for the meal and snack timing. Um, I know everyone has really busy schedules, so thank you for joining me now, or if you're joining us later, thank you for watching the recording. Um, just a reminder that I am your campus dietitian, Cara, and I've been really enjoying meeting with your athletes. I know I've met with quite a few teams as well. Um, if I haven't gotten a chance to meet you, um, welcome, and please come on and introduce yourself. Um, you can shoot me a text, there my, my cell phone number, um, or you can send me an email. Um, I'm also on Instagram. So I just wanted to give you a little overview of ways that I can help your players or your teams, and that way you have an idea if you do want to reach out and ask additional additional questions or set up something specific for you. Um, I've been meeting with a lot of individual athletes. Some now towards the end of season have had injuries. Um, some are trying to recover for injuries with winter and spring sport just around the corner. Um, some have had tummy trouble. We'll talk about that a little bit today, but I do want you to know that I'm here to screen for things like disordered eating, eating disorders, but also to help them if they are having some kind of tummy trouble or stomach upset to try to figure out why. Um, other things might be team sessions or little groups. Sometimes we get little rumblings of like, should we be taking this or should we be drinking this or eating this? Or um, maybe it's even utilizing like to go or kind of the travel meal options or how to set up your hotel mini fridge kind of thing, something like that. Uh, might have like a smaller group that just has a few questions and we can either hop on a call similar to this or I can come to your university if I'm gonna be on campus. I'm happy to set up those appointments, but also happy to do team talks. So if your whole team wants something, happy to set something up. Um, maybe it's something specific, like we're talking about today, meal and snack timing. Maybe you just really want everyone to kind of get an overview of what the options are and kind of an overview of um, performance nutrition. Um, I also do work with dining services on campus. So if they're having trouble finding options on campus with the options available, how to make these performance plates um, based on the options at each school. I'm happy to talk through some of those options as well. So please reach out anytime and encourage your athletes as well. This cell phone number is my work cell, so I do have a lot of athletes that may call or text this number as well, which is totally fine. So um, just always like to start with a little bit of a fun fact or some kind of intriguing fact that hopefully starts off the session. Um, up to 50% of athletes report some kind of stomach upset during performance or during a training session. And this could be something like nausea, diarrhea, right? Something severe kind of like that. It might even just be though like stomach cramping or a lot of our athletes will say something like, after my meal, I feel heavy or I, um, um, I feel like I'm just kind of bogged down or maybe they're feeling bloated and it's kind of disrupting some of their play. So it could be something that's really causing them to rush to the bathroom or something that's just kind of making them enough uncomfortable that they're not thinking about their time on the field or their time on the court. So just kind of think, do you have any athletes like that? Do you have any of these overall kind of rumblings on the team? Um, up to 50% of athletes do report this. So it is very, very common. So let's just start with the basics. Um, I have talked about, like I mentioned before, the hydration and performance plates, but like where does this fit in? So I do like to show this slide. It's kind of like a pyramid of where we start, and it's really, really important to form a solid base. So first things first, we really need to be eating food. Um, I put whole foods on here. I don't mean the grocery store, like real food, right? I don't want them just eating um, these sport fuels and things like that, or um, only eating a protein bar for breakfast. Like that just doesn't count. So our are they eating enough? And along those lines, are they eating three meals a day? Are they getting in a couple of different snacks or are they just eating one meal? Um, if they're just eating one meal, we're very much on the bottom of this pyramid trying to get back to basics. Um, 
through those meals, we want to make sure that they have a carbohydrate, a protein, and some color. The color really helps to reduce inflammation. So if we're eating like a tan, white, brown, orange plate, um, the next goal for them is to add in some color. Um, and we can't forget about hydration. So hydration really helps our mental capacity and being able to make decisions really quickly. It helps us recover. It helps prevent injuries. It helps um, temperature balance, especially when we're in the fall or in the summer with those hot tournaments and things like that. So hydration is really important there. So making sure again that we've got this kind of bottom tier really solid um, along with that bottom tier, which I don't touch a ton on, but is always good if you're having athlete meetings or something is to ask them about their sleep um, really recommend seven to nine hours of sleep of course they can do a nap or sing, things like that but if they're only sleeping five hours at night and then they're just taking naps they're not getting that really deep restful sleep where they're getting that key recovery and solidifying plays or anything that you've gone over in their brain as well as their academics so um, again that kind of rest and recovery falls into that bottom tier Today we're going to talk about the meal timing aspect, um, a little touch on like some of the sport fuels like a Gatorade or things like that, but I did cover some of that in the hydration talk as well. And then December is right around the corner, believe it or not, so that talk is going to be on supplements. So the whole idea for fall was just to really set you up with this basic pyramid, hydration and performance plates, meal timing, and supplements. So just a couple things um, to go over based on the previous sessions. Again, I mentioned the performance plates should really com be composed of a protein, a carbohydrate, and some color. If you don't notice that that's what your athletes are eating, um, really come at it from a point of concern as opposed from like an accusatory, like, why aren't you eating this? Are you really not going to eat with the team? Um, how come you're only eating that? Really, you don't need that fried sandwich? Like something like that can kind of come off as accusatory. So maybe asking something like, hey, I've been noticing, um, you've been mentioning you haven't been eating breakfast. Like, how is your energy level compared to the other teammates for that morning practice? Or um, I've notice you've only been kind of picking at some of our pregame meal like have you eaten something before or is there something different we could be offering for you just to make sure that you're fueled well for the game so again kind of coming at it from instead of like accusing them of being wrong just kind of being more inquisitive because you really are curious so you know how are they feeling when they play do you feel like you have enough energy um do you have you been eating something before pregame meal so that's why you're not really hungry are there other things we could be offering you that maybe you tolerate better i'm just asking from a point of concern can really open up the door to future conversations and make sure that they are really fueling properly. And if you have questions about that or you would like me to meet with one of those athletes individually to kind of do an assessment, especially if you start seeing frequent injuries or trouble concentrating during games, um, feeling I, agitated even can be a sign of underfueling. So um, just reach out to me. I'm happy to um, kind of talk you through how we can set that athlete up with an appointment. So let's go on to fueling and the timing. So like I mentioned, sometimes athletes are not fueling properly around the performance or around their exercise. And I'm always reminding athletes, just like you do, I'm sure, but we have to practice, right? So just like you have to practice your sport, you also need to practice your nutrition. So kind of keeping that in mind that we really do need to practice our fuel before our training sessions and practice our fuel before our performance, because we don't want to try something new. And then that actually causes more stomach upset. And then they really are knocked out for the game. So some of you, I know fall sports are kind of of winding down this actually may be the perfect time to start practicing some of these fueling techniques to see what works for them so by the time next season comes around not only do they have great hydration and performance plates but now they've also got the timing down so that they can perform at their best without feeling bogged down without feeling heavy without feeling crampy or having some of those other side effects so for that pre-workout we really want to top off the stores i often talk about our um little choo-choo trains right so we've got these little choo-choo trains of of glucose they're called glycogen chains and in order to swing a bat in order to kick a ball in order to dribble up and down the court you've got to be able to break off one of those little choo-choo train cars and use that for energy so um, making sure that they are all full by the time we come into a competition because if your competitor is totally full and your team is only half full now you can see who's going to perform well towards the end of the game right we need to make sure that we're topping off before that performance begins so that we have long lasting energy. 
during the workout, during the training session, during the performance, we want to make sure we're maintaining those levels. So we'll go through a few of these examples of specifically, and then we'll go through an overall day, a few examples towards the end. Um, Post-workout is really about replenishing our stores, so making sure that we're topping them off again, um, utilizing the hormones that we've got circulating around to really optimize our refueling. Um, it helps with recovery, it helps prevent injuries, and helps set us up really well for whatever comes next. So let's just take an overview. This is just an example so that when we're walking through these examples more specifically, you have an idea of what a day might look like around a training session. So roughly three to four hours before, I know many of you are already doing this, this is when your pregame meal happens. If you have practice, the athletes need to be kind of doing pregame meals on their own. So three to four hours before, it was really is going to be a complete meal. Um, we know that they only have three to four hours. So, you know, should they be having rice and beans? Yeah, they should be able to tolerate that. Okay, but you are going to have some athletes that, you know, like beans are going to make them feel a little bloated, a little gassy. Maybe that's not going to go as well. Um, or maybe, you know, some athletes are great with broccoli. Most athletes three to four hours before a training session are going to do much better with like a cooked carrot, um, green beans, zucchini, maybe a salad with some other things on it. And so that's going to be a good color option. And then for your proteins, instead of doing something like a beef brisket or um i don't know a pork tin something like that like pulled pork it's, it's something like a pork tenderloin or maybe a turkey breast or chicken breast those i always think of it as kind of if it's easier to chew it's easier to digest so we can think about those like beef brisket right you really got to chew it it's kind of a tough meat um as opposed to a chicken breast which kind of really does dissolve a little bit it's easier to chew those easier to chew options are easier to digest so when you have three to four hours you really are going to be fully digested by the time that you get to that training session that also means that it's easier to digest it gets into the blood gets into the muscles in perfect timing so you can actually use that for energy um <clears throat> one of the reasons why that stomach upset occurs is because we're in like kind of a fight or flight mode, right? So if we're like running down the court, kind of like running away from a bear, um, what's going to happen is our digestive tract essentially says like, ooh, we got to put this on hold for a second. Like we got something more important to do. So whatever is not digested by that time is just really going to sit in the stomach. And that's when it can cause some of those extra troubles. So um, again, making sure easy to chew, easy to digest. So again, the closer we get then one to two hours before might be a a smaller meal, more simple carbohydrates. I put a peanut butter picture on here because I'm um, thinking about it again. If you have a couple less hours, digesting chicken might be a little bit harder. So maybe peanut butter toast or waffle with some banana on it would be good. Um, less than 60 minutes before, even 30 minutes before, that's when you're going to really use these simple carbohydrate snacks. And people say, yeah, Cara, but like goldfish, are they really healthy? Well, maybe no, you shouldn't be eating them all day long, right? But when you only have 30 minutes to get to a training session, you need the carbs to go in your belly, into your blood, into your muscles in a quick fashion so that you can actually use that energy for your training session or for your competition. So when you have three to four hours, you can do more complex whole foods, but the closer you get to the training session, you may want to do something else pretzels, goldfish, animal crackers, um, squeezy pouches of applesauce, right? Something like that might be really good right before a training session. And then it always encourage a fuel 15 afterward, which is a carbohydrate and protein combination. And that really helps again, to not only um, restore those choo-choo trains we talked about, but also to recover the muscle. And one of the things right now that I have kind of the back and forth with our athletes about is, well, isn't protein important? Yes, protein is super important. If you don't have enough energy though, and you don't have enough carbohydrates, you're actually going to use the protein that you're eating for energy. So you're not using that protein to build your muscle. You're using it for energy. And we want you to use those carbohydrates for energy because that's your body's preferred, most efficient way to use its energy. So I kind of think about it. Remember, we've talked about these choo-choo trains, but you can almost think about it as your choo-choo train cars, not what's in them, but the actual cars themselves is the protein and you need that muscle, right? That's why we do the weight training sessions. That's why you make little tears in your muscle to build more muscle it actually holds more energy, gets you through even longer. So not only strength, but also endurance happens when you're building more strength, more protein, right? So the protein adds the train cars. So you actually have more train cars to fill. So when you eat the carbohydrates, you have more energy all stored up. So hopefully that kind of makes some sense. 
So when we go into the pre workout, really again, three to four hours before <clears throat> a whole plate. So maybe you're going to do something like pasta with a roll, grilled chicken and some mm, green beans, right? That might be an example of a pregame meal. Maybe you're going out for sandwiches. They can do the bread on the top or bottom, the turkey in the middle, some color on their sandwich to add some extra carbohydrate, maybe a baked chip, maybe a fruit cup, maybe a yogurt parfait, um, and some of those healthy oils, maybe like an avocado slice on there, um, maybe even some ranch dressing. I know people are like, oh, isn't that bad? No, we need some oils in our body. So if it helps them eat the color, it helps them eat their pregame meal, we really need them to ingest the fuel then we can start kind of nitpicking about what's where but overall we need them to eat um, <clears throat> again the closer we get to the competition the more you're going to like kind of moderate your protein and limit your fat and fiber and why do i say that fat and fiber actually kind of essentially coat your stomach and when you coat your stomach it's harder for the energy to get from your stomach into your blood so as we get older right maybe as coaches maybe as parents whatever like really we want lots of fiber and we want lots of protein and we want to watch our carbohydrates and have tons of color but at a pregame meal you don't want that to you don't want to feel full for a long period of time the idea is to get the energy in your muscles so limiting some of that fat and fiber for the pregame meal and the close or you get to competition actually helps the carbs to get to your muscle quicker. So maybe one to two hours before, have a glass of milk, a um, waffle with peanut butter and banana, or maybe you're going to have like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and an applesauce squeeze, right? Like something that's a little easier to digest. And then less than 60 minutes before, maybe even 30 minutes before, applesauce squeeze, pretzels, animal crackers, um, goldfish, maybe some dry cereal or granola, maybe one of these fig bars, something like that. And then you're like, Cara, but you put fruit snacks on there. Yep, it's not something just as a snack. This should not be something they're eating all day long, right? This is like 30 minutes before I need to eat something and get on the court. And so if they tolerate fruit snacks, that can be an easy, quick form of sugar. Um, if you do have athletes that are prone to diarrhea or kind of stomach cramping, some of these really simple sugars might exacerbate that a little bit. So they may do better with a pretzel or some applesauce squeeze. Um, the other thing nice about like a pretzel is that I talk about it during our hydration talk. But one of the things there is that a lot of times our cramping during performance is actually caused by low sodium. Um, so if we're having a little bit of the salt on the pretzels, it may encourage us to drink a little bit more water and also help with that sodium for cramping. During a workout, we really need to consider um, how long is this training session? How hot and humid is it? Are they sweating a lot? Most of the time, if they're doing a kick around, shoot around, maybe they're just going to do um, a quick weight training session, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Maybe it's something like batting practice. Usually water is just fine here. You don't need anything extra. We just need to stay hydrated. It's not a long period of time. So as long as they're eating their meals and their snacks, Snacks. They really don't need anything right before um, and they are fine with just water. If it's something that's longer than an hour, maybe um, 45 minutes to 70, 75 minutes, adding in some of these simple carbohydrates really can help. So not only do we want to look at fluid levels and how much they're sweating, we also want to add back some electrolytes and some carbohydrates. So again, going back to that hydration talk that I did, sometimes Gatorade works really well for this. It has the extra sodium, it has the simple carbohydrates, and again, yes, there's sugar in it, but it's for a purpose. Um, some of the dehydrated fruits can work well here as well. So again, like the longer it is, maybe you're going into an hour and a half, two hours. Um, that may be an opportunity to do some dried fruit, maybe a handful of raisins or a half of a banana. Like there's a reason why during these half marathons, full marathons, they've got the sliced oranges and the bananas because it's a longer competition. So you have actually more time to kind of slowly digest things over time. But again, that 45 minute to an hour, 75 minute mark, maybe an applesauce squeeze will do you just fine. Um, If it is a little more hot and humid, you may want to consider something like some of these energy blocks or the Huma or the um, scratch uh, hydration. Something like this adds a little bit more electrolytes. It can add a little bit more carbohydrates, but again, it depends on budgets. It depends on um, what the athlete has been training with because we really do want them to practice their fueling as well. Um, so maybe it's, you know, a couple of peanut butter crackers and a half a banana during halftime or something. That could be a really good opportunity to refuel um, without them be feeling bogged down. 
What about post-workout? So post-workout is all about recovery, like I mentioned. So we want to refuel the muscles with carbs. We want to rebuild the muscles with protein, and we want to rehydrate not only with water, but also the electrolytes. And just a reminder, if they lose one pound of um of weight during a practice session, it's almost all sweat. This is not energy losses. So they need to drink 16 to 20 ounces to rehydrate. And that's usually within an hour and a half or two hours post practice, post um, training. So making sure that you are encouraging them to take those water breaks and to rehydrate after performance is really key. So if we look at this, um, that Fuel 15 might be a chocolate milk. And like, really is chocolate milk the gold standard? It kind of is. A lot of athletes say, after a training session, they just don't really feel very hungry. But that is exactly when our muscles are craving things. Our hormones are saying like, feed us, feed us. Um, you've got like the blood is circulating still because your heart rate hasn't totally slowed down yet. Your digestive tract can keep in really simple things. So that liquid chocolate, which has extra sugars in it, the carbohydrates, and then it does have a little bit of protein. So all of that works really well together to absorb quickly and get straight into those muscles. Um, other things might be a soy milk. So if you do have someone with a lactose intolerance or dairy allergy, um, I know it's really popular right now to do almond milks, coconut milks, etc., but they don't have any protein in them. The soy would be the replacement option there, um, but you could also do other things. Maybe it is peanut butter crackers. Maybe it's a handful of almonds or some kind of trail mix with a piece of fruit, like um, a banana, applesauce, oranges are listed here. Those cutie clementines are coming back in season. That's one of our like winter fruits. So having some of that citrus back in can help with that as well. And of course, all these colors help reduce inflammation. So we're trying to kind of create inflammation to build that muscle and then quick reduce it so we don't um, increase injury. The other reason that this refueling is so important are the times that you're having like two practices a day, maybe it's a tournament weekend, you've got multiple games in a week. This recovery period is key because it really helps you to absorb all of your nutrition. Now, when all these hormones are going around um, is the perfect opportunity. If you don't refuel within this 15 to 30 minutes, I call it a fuel 15 just because people get like into other things. They're like, oh, I'm going to gab with my friends and I'm going to take a shower and chill out, right? You're like, no, eat something. Um, so fuel 15 kind of then you really do get it in by 30 minutes. Um, if you don't get that in, it can take a couple of days to replete the same amount, um, especially if you don't have that downtime in your schedule. It's going to be really hard to replete those same amount of stores. Um, and then after that kind of fuel 15 concept, an hour or two later, really focusing on um, getting in a performance plate again. And now this is the perfect opportunity because they don't have a training session coming up. Have all the whole grains, eat all the colors, get in lots of protein, whatever kind you like. Um, so again, the carbohydrates, half of a plate, um, a quarter plate of color, quarter plate of protein. If you have someone who's injured, you have someone who's like a practice player not performing in the game, they can adjust some of these plate portions a little bit, but for sure your key players, the ones that are doing the full on training sessions, they need to kind of keep this well balanced plate. So let's look at just a couple examples and then I'll open it up if you all have any questions. Um, I'm just going to give an example of a morning practice. So say we've got a morning practice at 7 a.m. And I know that's like being generous because some teams are practicing at 530, 6 a.m. If that's the case, optimizing your evening snack is key, especially if these athletes are like, I'm not really a breakfast person. I really don't have much of an appetite in the morning. And you're seeing that partway through practice, they're sluggish or they're lacking in concentration. Um, having an evening snack can be super, super important. So let's Let's just kind of go over a basic what your timing might look like would be a mini breakfast at 5 30 some kind of quick fuel 30 minutes before so maybe that dehydrated fruit an applesauce squeeze a banana some goldfish something like that would be easy to do 30 minutes before i didn't put the fuel 15s on here because i kind of lump them right in with training sessions so after your training session the fuel 15 um, as a team it's really easy to do that just kind of reminding everyone especially if you can have something simple in your locker room right after but then encouraging them to get to breakfast. And I know that each of our dining halls have different um, closing breakfast times. So if this is not at the dining hall, think about what other options are available on campus. 
or they could get like a breakfast sandwich. Um, I know many campuses have breakfast sandwich options in their retail locations. Maybe it is breakfast in the dining hall and they don't have quite as many choices because they moved down to continental. So maybe I gave the example here. It may be peanut butter toast with a banana or a waffle with banana and peanut butter and then trying to do something like a yogurt parfait again because we want that half plate of carbs, quarter plate of protein, quarter plate of color to really help. Um, roughly 11 o'clock. So we're kind of looking at like two hour chunks here. It depends on the athlete, depends on their size, right? Some of our big guy athletes, they're going to need to for sure eat every couple hours. Um, some other sports, depending on your moving into out of season, et cetera, you may be able to push that to four hours. It just kind of depends on the sport and the athlete. Um, but kind of looking at having a snack at 11, a full on lunch with a performance plate at one. I did put the waters on here, remind them to drink. They don't remember on their own, um, kind of really reminding them. And that one from the hydration talk is take their weight in pounds and divide that number by two. And when you divide that number by two, that's the amount of ounces you should consume each um, day at a minimum without sweat losses, without training. So most of our athletes are actually more than the 64 ounce recommendation. That's kind of blanket statement out there. Eight glasses, 64 ounces. Most athletes are needing much more than that. Um, 3.30, have some kind of a snack, um, six o'clock dinner. And then remember I said that optional snack in the evenings, but I love using a snack in the evenings, especially if they have morning practice. Greek yogurt is one of my favorites to do because it has two kinds of protein in it. One is whey protein. That's a really fast protein. It gets right to the muscles. And then you have casein, which is a slow protein that works really well overnight. So when they have the time to really rest, really wind down, getting that seven to nine hours of sleep, hopefully, then that's a great opportunity for them to not only get in their carbs, but also their protein so that they're fueled well for that morning practice. Then they can wake up 30 to 60 minutes before, maybe even have a glass of juice and some dry cereal on their way to the court, on the way to the field, so that they really are fueled up for that morning practice. We'll go through just a quick afternoon example. Um, I know a lot of games, a lot of training sessions will start in the afternoon as well. So maybe they're up at eight. Again, maybe we're thinking <laughs> maybe not for college students. Maybe that's a nine o'clock breakfast, but encouraging them to eat something. And again, if they don't have much of an appetite, they could drink something. Um, it's not ideal, but maybe they do want to make a smoothie. Maybe they do want to have a glass of milk and a banana, right? It doesn't have to be complicated, but the more well-rounded breakfast they can have, they really do start out their day well. Um, 10 o'clock might be a snack. 11, I'm sorry, 12 o'clock is the lunch. So remember, we kind of took the training session, counted back by three hours, and that's that full lunch meal. Um, so they have a sandwich here with extra fruit, some water, something like that. And then um, half hour before, quick refuel, right? Top off those stars as top as we can get them, as full as we can get them before they start training. Again, the Fuel 15 is lumped in with your training session, little star there. So a recovery snack might be at five o'clock and you say, really? Five o'clock, Cara? Hmm. Like, isn't that dinner time? A lot of our college students are eating dinner at 6.37, 7.30. So making sure they have a snack um, if they're not going to have a meal within a couple of hours. Um, dinner might be at 630. So having um, a full on dinner that again is that performance plate and then using an evening snack, especially if they're having trouble getting in their energy throughout the day. Those evening snacks can be really key. So just kind of an overview, we really went through, make sure they're using their performance plates, uh, make sure they're staying really well hydrated. And the kind of rule of thumb is the closer it is to training, the easier it needs to be to chew, so the easier it needs to be to digest. And that will really help with some of the stomach upset that we're seeing for some of the athletes. And if you do have additional questions or concerns or you have a specific athlete you have questions about, have them reach out to me. I really try to be approachable. I'm happy to schedule appointments. And like I mentioned, if you have a small group with similar questions, we can even do a group session or a team talk. So I just wanted to remind you that the next session coming up is on supplements. That's going to be December 1st, the first Wednesday of the month. Same time here. They will be recorded. I know we're kind of in the middle of seasons now. Fall sports 
winding down, winter sports um, winding up. So um, everyone's schedules are a little bit all over the place, but that's why I do like to record these because I do know people listen later as well. So feel free to share them with your coworkers, with other coaches, your GAs, um, assistants as well, because I know a lot of people are helping you fuel your athletes um, throughout the season. So um, I am going to hop off of this slide so I can see if we have any questions, but I hope you enjoy the talk um, and I hope to see you on December 1st for supplements. sharing and I'm going to repost here um, some of the information so on here just so that you're aware I have like welcome coaches my contact information is in the chat so if you open up your chat box you'll see that there um, I do have a copy of the PowerPoint slides if you prefer me send them by email just shoot me an email hey car can you send me the slides happy to send those I also clicked on um, put some downloadable resources these are just an eight and a half by eleven really easy to print and put in the locker rooms um, just even one at a time right like do one for one week print the other one for another week another week so they can kind of see it over and over um, and I put my YouTube channel on there as well in case you missed any sessions or you knew of anyone who had to leave early come on late today so does anyone have questions you can raise a hand type in the chat and I can unmute you um, otherwise I'm just gonna you're you're welcome to go I know everyone is busy I'm gonna hang on the line for a few more minutes thank you all for coming today I think I can unmute you. Let's see. Allow mic. There you go. You should be able to unmute. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the great presentation. As usual, I tuned into the last one, and these have been very helpful. Oh, perfect. Um, the question I have as far as like a meal. Um, after a game, mm -hmm. what should I be trying to get our guys? Because I'm in charge of the food sure. um, as far as, I mean, I know the vegetables, um, but what specifically as far as like meat or anything like that, what should I be trying to get these guys? I think honestly, anything where you can get in a good bit of protein. So most people are on budgets. So there too, vegetables are hard if you're on the bus, right? But maybe you can keep some apples, bananas, oranges in the cooler. Um, maybe you can keep some like big bags of like the baby carrots, maybe that's something. And then just get some little ranch packets or even buy some ranch bottles with just like a little, um, those little, um, like cups, like you could even do like a little Dixie cup or something, right? And just have them all kind of squeeze their ranch right in there with some carrot sticks. So there's ways to do that on a budget as well. I think it just depends where you're eating and what that budget looks like. If they have access to sandwiches, maybe that's what you're doing. Ham sandwiches, turkey sandwiches, some places even do um, like a chicken sandwich. If you have guys though that like a beef sandwich, like a roast beef sandwich, it actually has a little bit more sodium and it is a lean protein. So for a post workout, that would be appropriate as well. Um, because it has more time to digest, I wouldn't focus too much on the type of protein. If you can get something that's less fried, that's great. But we also want them to eat it. Um, <clears throat> so kind of taking a look at what you guys like. Is that helpful? Um, otherwise, if you're going to like a Cracker Barrel or I'm not sure where y'all are eating, um, it may just be looking at the menu and kind of deciding, you know, like spaghetti. A lot of like your pregame meals can be mimicked for postgame. It could be like a stir fry, maybe like a Chipotle concept where you got like a, a burrito bowl kind of thing where you can have like a bunch of rice. You've got your diced chicken and beans in there if they like it. Um, again, I do think, especially when you're in season, that recovery is so important but not specifically always looking at like are you getting every single component but even more so are they eating so if it's something that they're like eh, I kind of like it but I'm not digging it and they're only going to eat half of it because they really don't like it I'd rather them eat a full portion of something so that they're recovering well that makes sense okay that definitely makes sense thank you so much I appreciate yeah. you yeah you're welcome. Feel free to reach out via email or whatever if you have additional questions as well. I'm also happy to set up a separate call if you have more specific questions for your team. Will do. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Anybody else? All right.
Thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all on December 1st when we talk about supplements. Have a good day, everyone.